now we're talking life-saving material, knowledge. Yeah. Like, you might need to know this to save your life. What we're doing has value in people's lives. Pressure is what makes people better. In that case, let's have some fun. It's going to be a great year for everybody. Everybody who wants it to be. People who are going to watch this are going to be like, Ooh, look at how nice it is. It looks nice. I have no idea that it's uh, freezing balls. <laughs> I think it was like nine degrees or something. Well, how was the flight? It was good. I'm optimistic that we're going to have between 20 and 30 law enforcement oh, on cool. Sunday. That's the thing. Oh, oh, you mean tasers fail? Tasers fail. I've never seen any videos of them yeah, failing. Exactly. There's never been any video of guys like rolling out of them or hmm. fighting through it. Fortunately, everybody respects the police so much nowadays that nobody would put hands on a cop. Nobody's going to fight the police. Yeah. That's just true. It's a, you know, it's an unprecedented level hmm. of respect for the, for the police. Well, and since, since the courts and everybody are on the cop side, if, if, if it should get out of hand, at least we know that the police will never get in trouble for what they do because they're the good guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're not going to end up on national news or anything. Yeah. You know, so basically moved to a handcuffing position using a Camaro and then took the, and then realized this is a toy gun. And I was like, bro, what is wrong with you? You know what I mean? Right. But a different officer, different training background, probably would have smoked that guy. Right. So that, that, that's what I want to get across to these guys is, you know, it's in their best interest. And, and from a legal standpoint, too, I mean, it's a nightmare, right? Like, I mean, there is no upside, you know, no matter how clear cut it is. I have a friend going through it right now. Very clear cut shoot, like good all day. Legal should be. He's going to lose his job, probably. And he's being tried in the media. And like you would not believe, like he's not even going to get a fair chance in court because media has already tried him. Good luck finding a jury that's just going to look at the facts as they are. And he's so stressed out. I saw him a couple weeks ago. He looks like a rail. He's lost so much weight. He can't eat. He can't sleep. You know, like, man, why go through that? If you could just, you know, take somebody down or control somebody to the point it doesn't, it never gets there, so much better. Oh. No way. Hi. What? What? Yes way. What's new? What's new? Hel Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, John. He used to be my spider. -Man. Mad Dog 2020, what's up? Hi, John Tester. John Tester? <laughs> Who the heck is John Tester? <laughs> Hi, WWE wrestler. You thought I was John Cena or John Tester? Cena. Okay, mouse closed. I brought in my muscle in case you guys get out of hand and can't follow directions. This guy just got out of prison. I brought him here to keep you guys in line. So show me good attention. Hands by your side, feet together. Raise your hand if you can tell me how many secret samurai tips there are to being a good coach. Mad Dog, how many? Seven. Are you positive? Yes, you're correct. Let me guess, you can tell me all seven. Okay, quiet on the set. Oh, she aced it. Give her a big round of applause, guys. Mine too, okay? Because we're gonna sparty like it's 1999, or in this case, 2019, okay? Maddox, you want it, you want some action? Get out here. I'm gonna even let you pick. Just ignore Coach Leah. She's just here trying to learn some of my tricks. Woo, you want that? All right, right down there with Coach Rode. All right, I need two more. Hadley, I'm ready to see you get down. Woo, that was good. You fought him right to the end. Great job. Yeah. 
We don't get to cry at the end. We did too good to cry, right? Shake it off. Remember, we cry in the shower. That way we don't even know we're crying. Winners, we can leave them alone. It's when we're struggling that we need our coaches the most. So if ever your coaching starts to lose, that's when you really got to get louder, okay? Be encouraging. Let them know you're there for them, that they're doing good. So are you going to be a Sharknado or are you going to be over there with those guys? Okay, you're over here with me. I get it. It's a secure, safe place. Ready? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's try this again. Are you ready? Yes. Tension. If you don't have a full wall pad to yourself, we've got a problem. And All right, hands in the middle. Kiara. Kiara's on top because she's the only one in here who went down to California and laid it all on the line at the Pan Ams. One, two, three. And that is how you do it. Here's my Porsche. He's going to drop the hammer on you guys if you don't pay attention. That's a video, guys. Now you look. I know! <laughs> Michael, nice work. It's time to pay the piper. Ouch. Ah, Chihuahua. Ouch. Hi, coach. We're Michael's. <laughs> I'm Travis. Nice to meet you, Michael's grandparents. It's to congratulate to Michael for getting his belt and to show him the, the hard work and persistence that we helped him gain by being his teammates. Correct. Celebration of what Michael's accomplished and then a chance for Michael to thank you guys for the role that you guys played in his success, right? Because nobody gets good at jujitsu by themselves, it takes training partners, coaches, and a place to do it, right? Oh, geez. He's putting the trick moves out there. Give him a round of applause, guys. Come on. All right, guys, let's get, let's get lined up for a quick picture. Good matches today, Michael. Way to not quit. Get in there. SPG on three. One, two, three. All right, so first things first, you guys know it's Cody's birthday, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Cody, right? So no, in all seriousness, Cody's one of my favorite people. Uh, so he's got a hell of a story. If you don't know it, you should have a conversation with him sometime. Thanks, he's an inspirational dude, motivational, you know, and one of the people I look at and go, hell yeah, you know, like that's what this is about, right? Jiu-Jitsu ultimately is about making better people. You know, if you're not making better people, you're doing it wrong, you know. And so seeing Cody reminds me of that. So it's pretty cool. So happy birthday, bro. Thank you, brother. All right. Appreciate now it. I'm going to choke you. Cool. All right. So here we go. All right. Here. Boom. One, gonna... two. Let's go. So I get in here. This way. I go here. Come underneath, get my grip, and that's my choke. Do this motion. All right. That sets this up. Drive in here, my shoulder hits, I land, and then I get my full control. Right? Hey, 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 stop fucking off. <laughs> right? Like, are you walking into a situation like this? You know? Are you walking into a situation with a tool in your hand? Are you walking into a situation going, well, let's see how this evolves? So, I'm just saying, long term, man, we can make a change with jujitsu. I think there's only one place to start, and that's to say thanks for doing 20 years on the streets, which from an outside perspective, having spent zero days in law enforcement, seems to be one of the most thankless jobs on the face of the planet. Yeah, so thank you, man. Th uh, thank you for doing that. It's, uh, I've visited Chicago and the surrounding areas, but I have been there on brief, you know, in one day, out two days later. But it's hard to avoid the, uh, the headlines and the news that always surrounds the Chicago area. So I, yeah. I hope at some point we can talk about your firsthand experience there because all I have is what I see on the news, so I inherently distrust it. Sure. Because I can't figure out whether or not it's boots on the ground truth right. or not. Yeah, yeah. And these guys would come like during their shift and we would train. I would train them, you know, hand-to-hand -hand stuff, cuffing stuff, just different ways to approach and solve the problem. You know, my goal was always to make us as dangerous as possible so we'd be as safe as possible. And, it, and the standard issue police tactic stuff, we all know, isn't the best, you know. And so it's check the box type stuff. And a lot of times it's tough to watch from an outside perspective. Your guys' procedures obviously and a lot of stuff were different than ours, but at some point you have to put your hands on people 
Right. Subject and control, subject control. Now that I understand how little you have to understand and know to be a very, very big problem. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're looking back at it now. But I see, I mean, you know, we all have access to YouTube, you know, and sure. you can see some horrendous stuff and people dying who maybe shouldn't die. Or it, most of the time, it's the officer getting in what I would say into a situation that's over the head because they're out of tools. Too great of a deficit. Well, they just, I, I see, yeah. I look at it from the perspective of your tool belt. If all you have is taser, gun, you're going to rapidly go through A to B to C if mm -hmm. you don't have that buffer of being comfortable with yeah. knowing how to handle yourself. What yeah, you were exactly. saying to, today at the end of the seminar actually really resonated with me, and it was the impact that jiu-jitsu had on your policing. Yeah. And uh, I definitely want to get into that because I'm assuming you two met through jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Straight SPG. Blast gym, yeah. yeah, straight blast gym. He got Matt dropped Thor. on my head a bunch of times. So. He got dropped on your head? He got dropped on my head. So, <laughs> so that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, other John, than John yeah, Cavanaugh talks about person. all the time, like he wants to train for what happens most of the time. Yeah, what you're most likely <laughs> to encounter, not what you're least likely to encounter. What are the chances that you're going to have two guns simultaneously held on you, ever? Yeah, what are the chances that? I mean, you guys are the exceptions, right? But a, sure guy, but, a, but a guy, but Paul like has me. had a gun held to his head, <laughs> right? But <laughs> I told but, you I did research on that. I got stories. But, but this is my point, though. <laughs> but you guys are the exception. Like you guys are the one percent. But yeah. a guy like me, I will never have a gun held to my body, most yeah. likely. Chances of that are slim to none. Yeah. Why would I prepare for something that's least likely to happen? Why not prepare for the stuff that is most likely to happen? The like, drunk dude at the bar. Yeah. Or, the, yeah. or wearing a seatbelt or a heart attack yeah. or the things that will actually kill me. Right? Like these overweight dudes in camo pants. Operate on nights, man. Smoking yeah. cigarettes. All right talking about terrorism they're gonna die of a heart attack <laughs> they really yeah. are yeah that's right a, that's I mean, a real point, issue yeah. like how how interested in self-defense are they yeah because they clearly don't care about themselves if they did they wouldn't be smoking they wouldn't be fat and carrying knives on the outside of your clothes yeah just don't buy it it's thing. just insincere talking about as you develop the capacity to be able to use those things you're, I find that you're least likely to use them. Yeah. Because you're like, you know, I'm good. I don't want any part of this because you have nothing right. to prove. That's what it right. was. You were talking about how you feel when you know that you can actually handle yourself. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to get in the fight in the bar. Yeah, you don't have to prove anything. Yeah. You, know, you have nothing to prove. So you can walk in there and just, you know, some guy, you know, oh, man, if you didn't have that badge, you didn't have that gun, like, okay, <laughs> I'd probably be worse. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> then there's no rules. You know, if I'm yeah. without a badge and a gun, I got no rules on me, dude. I'll wreck you. But, you know, you, when you're in those situations, you carry yourself. It's just that confidence that you have from being in the in the gym, constantly working against resistance, constantly being in miserable positions and realizing I can get out of them, you know. And um, it, it, it puts you, it gets you in a place mentally where you feel indomitable. Yeah. You know, and... and yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And so you carry yourself... In such a way that's not blatantly like, try me, bro, you know, but you but you do carry yourself in a different way, and I think the problem, not the problem, but kind of the the challenge or dilemma for most people in jujitsu, is they're constantly around other jujitsu people, so they really don't recognize it, and then also the issue is you know we're rolling with each other constantly i want to touch on one thing that you were just saying because it is so important and i find myself saying it all the time to my guys and girls but they're going with trained people yeah. every day and so oftentimes they're frustrated they're like i'm not that good at this but it's like no the person you're do, rolling with is just better do you at remember it remember yeah. what it was like when you're a blue belt and a new guy comes in and you're like perfect yes <laughs> Cause, exactly cause it's, yeah it's game on. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to well, destroy Well, they're a blank them. slate, right? They don't right. even know how but, to orient themselves. And, and here's you're the thing. Martial them. artists don't fight each other in bars. Right. Right? Yeah. Here's the problem. You have, and no disrespect to anybody, you know, in the business, but you have a 40-hour wonder. So you have a guy who doesn't train jiu-jitsu, never trained jiu-jitsu. They send him to this school. He does 40 hours at this school. Then he goes back. Now he's the expert. And he's going to train everybody. I think this. we know a guy who did this program, maybe. We're going to send these guys back to this jiu-jitsu. We do. We're going to send this guy back to this law enforcement <laughs> agency, and now he's an instructor. 
He's not even a white belt in my gym. They would get wrecked. In, yeah, he's in a any year and place. a half from his white belt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so then you have stuff where you'll see these guys teaching like a headlock escape backwards. Like they're doing it all wrong because their only exposure was that 40 hours yeah, and nothing else ever. And then they come back and they're the train, the trainer and they're the expert. And they're, and, and, you know, again, man, nothing against those guys because they're doing the best they can, but they're treading water and they're not doing well, you know, because they have no basis. They have no background in this stuff. And you're not so, going to learn it in 40 hours. Yeah. No way, man. You're not going to learn. I can't think of anything that I've learned. In well, at 40 hours. Can you think of yeah. anything you learned that you're done? Like you don't have to keep going back to it and back to it and, and refreshing think and, and just keeping it fresh all the time. Right. Yeah. And, and think now, now we're talking life-saving material knowledge. Yeah. Like you might need to know this to save your life. Well, or, it also or, might save the person's life that you're encountering. You know, cause again, back to the jujitsu thing, like I don't need to lump people up. You know, I don't need to hit them with a baton. I don't need to do all that stuff, man. I can control you with just my body. You know, <laughs> like I just, you know, I can get a good body lock on somebody and hang on to them, get cuffs on them, you know, and end of story. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do today. So our primary focus is uh, from the law enforcement side of the house. We're going to focus on uh, weapon retention. We're going to focus on uh, what to do with weapon retention out of the holster and in the holster. It's probably, for me, it's probably the best way to control another resisting person, another full-size person, um, would be through Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I haven't really found anything better. So, and that's, I started wrestling when I was about six years old, and I've done a variety of martial arts through the years just because it was fun for me, it was a hobby and I've never found anything that compares to this. So we'll pat each other down, make sure there's no weapons at all out here other than your fucking hands, and then we'll go to work. All right, all right, let's go. Pat each other down real quick. Outside, I'm gonna grab the neck hole, get on the radio, you know, let them know to pick it up, and, or whatever I need to do from here, and then I'm gonna start talking to this dude. All right, and his buddies. Because from right here, there's multiple opponents. What's that? Disparity of force, right? So multiple opponents means I can use tools. You know, they're more afraid of the taser than the gun. So it's kind of funny. So, yeah, or the, yeah. If you're a canine guy, that's when you hit that button. You're like, I will let the dog go, bro. So, boom, a little bit. How, out of every 10 arrests, how many times do you have to, how many times are they non-compliant? For me, yeah. the better I got at jujitsu, the less it happened. Why was that? Because I'd be in control of them before it would even start. You know? the and they could tell. Yeah, they could tell. I'd be just like, all right, bro, we gotta go. And I'd never let go of them. The problem is guys will do this. Hey, we gotta go. And then the guy rips away. So I'm here, if Travis pulls away, I just go with I'm like, hey, dude, come on. Got it? I'm not trying to grab it first because if I grab it and it's still in front of me, what's gonna happen? He's gonna get at least one round off. Is one enough? Yeah, it can be. The answer is fuck no. But one could be enough, right? If it hits me, if it punches me, center punches me in the aorta, then I'm gonna have a problem. You know, it's gonna be a wild 90 second ride. So if all of my practice is this cool shit, which looks really cool, and then I tap rack, and then I smoke with the gun, gun. First off, yeah, right, yeah. I went like, for that school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and first off, have you guys ever taken a gun off a bad guy and it's got like nine mil rounds in there, 380, maybe a 22 or two thrown in? Right? I'm, so do you really want to trust your life to that? Or would you rather just get that muzzle offline and then smoke them with your own? So that's what we're going to work on. So guns here, doesn't matter which side I go to. Okay, I'm not worried about any of this stuff. I'm worried about this control. All right, I want complete control of this gun. I want to lock it up, drive my hand underneath of here and keep control and not let him have it back. Okay, so We'll get into, I prefer, my disarm is a broken arm. So I prefer to just wreck their shoulder, break their arm. Anybody else want to volunteer? Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? I go through training partners like crazy. I don't know what's up. But because the thing is, we're already at lethal. So why am I worried about anything else? All right? So if I go to the inside, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to hug this in here. All right? And I'm not letting that go. I'm going to drive in here. And then I'm going to smoke them. 
Same thing from the outside. Lock it up here. I'm gonna drive this in here, pin it to his body. If I can, I'm gonna get my hand on it here, pin it right here, and then that's my, that's my rounds. Okay, all right, so let's work on that now. So as soon as that gun's in, on your chest, I just want you to avert it and get control, all right? Avert, get control, and then I want you to drop your body onto the back of that arm. And by drop, I mean just place your body weight on it. <laughs> Don't do a WWE move, right? I'm just putting my body weight on it because what that does is that keeps his arm straight and off of me. The muzzle's going everywhere else. Then I've got all kinds of takedowns. If you're training your jujitsu or your judo, I got all that stuff happening here. Okay? And people are always like, well, what if they get a round off? Yeah, I'm just like, if you want to be a firefighter, it's cool to be a firefighter, <laughs> right? Like, point of all that is train jujitsu. Like, seriously train jujitsu. Like, get in, man. I mean, this place is open to you guys. It's uh, multiple classes. It's cop friendly. Uh, we were just talking about that. Like, I don't have anybody in my gym. And it's not just because I'm they know I run it, but I don't have anybody in my gym that's criminal. You know, um, maybe guys that did stupid stuff when they were kids. Our focus is on making better communities and making ourselves safer, our community safer, and giving back. So that's, that's kind of my thing on that. So when you, you train with one of our gyms, that's what you're gonna run into. It's a cooler environment. So, and you'll get to do this stuff every day. Nothing, you know, gets council members more motivated than moms writing letters about their sons and daughters that are officers, that they're concerned for their safety. As culturally, we gotta kinda change LE. You know, we gotta change law enforcement, get them into training and make it a lifestyle. Man, well, I appreciate you guys coming out. I, I really do. Um, you guys came out and trained hard. I think everybody worked pretty hard. And uh, a lot of you guys already trained, yeah, you know, I can tell, so that's good. Cool. Thanks. Cool, cool. You guys wanna get a picture? All right, let's do it. Thank you.